Hello, this is Riyadh again. Uh, today I'm going to show you actually this is internal medicine review subjective questions part of IT exam that we have after maybe one week in the hospital that I used to work in, uh, which is basically AMC. And um, tomorrow we have this presentation and I was thinking maybe it's a good idea to share some of this presentation before I'm going to present it tomorrow. So basically the first topic will be in, uh, in ICD. Now the indications of ICD, you have to know there is a kind of primary indications of ICD and secondary, uh, secondary indications, which basically primary prevention or secondary preventions of. You have to know what's the problem here. Guys, the problem is sudden cardiac death. This is the main problem. You have to prevent, I mean, our concern is to, to prevent sudden cardiac death in patients. That's why, let's say the patient have MI. Okay, or let's say the patient have cardiomyopathy or heart failure, or cardiomyopathy, sorry, not heart failure, or re, uh, status post revascularization surgery, maybe ACP or, uh, or stent. Okay, ACP or stent. Now, both of those patients, the major concern for you is ejection fraction. You don't need a low ejection fraction for those patients. Low ejection fraction usually leads to a uh, sudden cardiac death. So base, but, but the numbers is a kind of confusion. So they use the number which is ejection fraction less than 30% after MI or less than 35% after uh, of the patient with cardiomyopathy or vascular resistance. Now the time is also another confusion. That's why I'm doing it this way. Maybe it's good to recall. If after MI, if the patient is already now MI and after MI within 40 days you check the ejection fraction of this patient and see the ejection fraction is 30, so this is a kind, this is high risk for sudden cardiac death. So maybe there is a kind of really good indication for ICD uh, at this level. Now, for cardiomyopathy or revascularization surgery, stent or ACP, now you will check it after three months. If after three months ejection fraction is still around 35%, there's also a great chance, a good chance for sudden cardiac death. Now, what you're gonna do at this level? So you will not do ICD as as this level. First, you have to make sure the therapy is really standard and is really optimized. So let's say the standard optimized therapy. And what I mean by standard optimized therapy, basically, I mean the patient has to be on beta blockers, you know, AC inhibitors or ARP, statin. I mean, all of these antihypertensive medicine, aldosterone antagonists, which is spironolactone, right? So you have also to decrease aldosterone levels, statin. Now, if the patient after this therapy, hey, if the patient after this therapy is stay, uh, sorry, um, remain ejection fraction low, so at this point, let's make at this point, which I see the really, really good uh, recommendations. And basically, this is ACC, let's say this is ACC, AHA, I think, HRS, 2000, HRS 2008 uh, guidelines or 2008 recommendations. So again, and usually the kind of question the patient after MI and you check the patient, you check ejection fraction from MI, please, the duration here is a kind of important. It's, I'm not talking about the duration is early. Early, dura uh, early time, you need time. You need around more than 40 days. And there is a kind of, uh, there is really a kind of physiological issues or maybe statistical issues why they choose 40. Uh, I don't think it's the time to talk about that today. So basically, am I 40 days ejection fraction still low? Make sure the therapy is okay and then ICD. Now for secondary prevention, if we would like to talk about secondary prevention also quickly, so the patient, let's say the patient is heart failure or cardiomyopathy, and now this patient have risk of sudden cardiac death. Why? Maybe this patient have VT, you have to make sure this VT is a kind of sustained VT. Sus VT, or maybe a patient have sudden cardiac arrest, uh, but he survived basically, but he survived over this second cardiac arrest. So, so now I think it's easy, guys, because these two, these two parameters give you really indication that the patient is really now high risk for what? Again, for her high risk for future arrhythmia. So basically, the patient high risk for sudden cardiac death. So let's say this is high risk here and and the arrhythmia there. So it is, you know, it is the same consequence. It is the same consequence. So the, so the major problem, you are afraid about cardiac, sudden cardiac death for the primary or secondary. Now in secondary, if the patient have sudden cardiac arrest of sustained VT, these are really a good candidate for ICD. Now, please, put into your concentration, especially here, sustained VT, sudden cardiac arrest, there is no 
let's say I'm not sure if this is if this is easy to understand it, but I I, I think I, I think it's easy. It's let's say the patient survive after cardiac arrest or sustained VT. You have to make sure there is no reversible causes first, right? I think this is important. And what I mean by reversible causes, it's ilkytrolite. You have to check for ilkytrolite of those patients. Maybe there is ilkytrolite problems or QT, high QT, whatever the drug that is taking by patients, so please correct the QT first. I mean, you have to correct the reversible causes first before you consider the ICD of this patient. So maybe if you correct the reversible causes here at this level, you can make, you can put ICD again, or here at this level also ICD again, and let's try to to delete this, yeah, because it's not nice. Let's try to do so. Basically, I think this is much, much neat. So, um, so this is the ICD indication. And uh, if you will see the ICD indication, you will see it really at the end when you when you make sure no reversible causes in case of secondary, and when you make when you make sure the patient's really an optimized therapy after MI and um, after after really MI after 40 days. So, thank you.